Hello everyone and thank you for joining us at this Your Overseas Home webinar. My name is Christopher Nye, Senior Editor at Your Overseas Home and Italy Property Guides and today we'll be chatting with uh, Stefania Russo from Property Organizer about your viewing trip to Italy. The business end of buying a property after all those perhaps years of planning, so very exciting times. So it's great to have you all with us, whether uh, live or you're catching up on, on demand. Um, uh, look, uh, well, we only have 30 minutes, so we'll, we'll, we'll press on. If you have a question, uh, please type your query into the questions tab on the right hand side of your screen. We're very much focusing on the nuts and bolts of a viewing trip to, to see property. So I'm sure we'll get questions on visas and tax, etc. But um, and we'll come to those if we have time. But do check out the on demand section of your overseas home and you'll find recordings of webinars that we've covered all those topics. And if you need a reminder of anything discussed today or want to share this with family or friends, you'll get a replay available on the Your Overseas Home website to watch whenever you like. OK, Stefania, it would be great if you could just start by giving us a quick uh, summary of who, who you are and how Property Organiser can help our viewers today. Hello, Chris. Hello, everyone, uh, virtually. Um, yeah, I'm Stefania. I'm the director of Property Organiser. Uh, property organizer is known as estate agents. We are uh, property consultants um, or buyer's agent. Uh, we deal with property all over Italy. Uh, so clients come to us when they're looking for a property and we carry out uh, bespoke searches, uh, looking at uh, properties sold by private owners, developer, as well as uh, um, local agencies. So we work with the local agencies so that we can provide a full pictures of uh, uh, of all properties available so basically we offer what the market offers to our clients and not having any vested interest on any properties we are independent and we can assist our clients uh, from the negotiation to uh, completion and uh, and beyond by dealing also with all the administrative part from uh, getting a fiscal code which is uh, is like a tax code uh, that you need to buy properties in Italy, uh, to look at, uh, you know, to open a bank account on their behalf and everything that is required uh, in order to purchase a property. Now, so uh, how far in advance should we be planning uh, our viewing trip? Well, this one really depends on, on the period of the year um, and the type of property also that one is looking for. Um, just to give you some practical examples, uh, there are some periods of areas like Christmas, the middle of August, which is the Ferragosto in Italy, where the agency shut down. Uh, so, or whether I'm on holidays, like the 2nd of June, it was a long, it's called a bridge in Italian. So it's a long uh, three days holiday. So um, if somebody goes on holiday to Italy and try to plan viewings at the same time as to ensure that uh, agency are prepared to work on uh, on those days so soon as you know soon as they know that they can travel uh, the better in terms of giving notice uh, on the other end um, city apartment for example in some in some cities like it could be venice or uh try to think now on top of my head Teresa or you know others uh, florence where property do tend to sell quite quickly compared to the average in England, in, um, in Italy, um, it's pointless to book so long in advance because uh, uh, sometimes property can go away within the, you know, within the months. So it really depends the case by case. Um, from our point of view, since we carry out a bespoke search, we always say at least to give us about six, seven weeks notice because in this way we can carry out a very thorough search by, as I said, dealing with local agencies, private owners, and presenting all the properties that match the requirement of our clients in time for them to review it and then uh, deciding which one we want to see or we might have further questions. So really depends on, on the locations and if you're dealing directly with the local agents or with an agency like us, which we have different type of way of working. Uh, now, I, I guess weekends, you, not everyone works weekends, so it's best perhaps to plan it for midweek rather than uh, a long weekend. Yeah, not many agencies. I mean, again, depend on locations. Uh, there are some agencies uh, that they work 
uh, on weekends with no problem. Uh, but there are some areas of Italy where they're very strict that they don't work in, on, a, on a Saturday or Sunday, uh, or maybe Saturday only half day. So really worth it to, to double check first um, what kind of uh, you know, timing or availability the agency gives you. So, uh, what in advance of our um, of our trip to to Italy? <clears throat> um, what sort of thing are we going to need to need to bring with us? Do we do we need proof of funds? For, no, for example? no proof of funds. Uh, no documents. No, you know, obviously passport. But we travel with our IDs around, so uh, that is needed. Uh, no deposit uh, because once you decided to make an offer. The, a transfer can be made um, once you can back home uh, by bank transfer. So, you know, I I always say in, in the past, and it's not happening much more now, but we've been in business for about, six, what, what, about 16 years. And I remember about 15, 16 years ago, even 10 years ago, we were at local agencies that, or stories of local agencies that were accompanying clients to the ATM machine to get a deposit of maybe a thousand or two thousand. Don't do that uh because it's not required uh, you can send the money uh within a few days once you come back uh what is important though the only things i would say not even proof of funds but if somebody's interested in buying with the mortgage ideally is uh, to have a, a to check with the mortgage broker um whether the person is uh you know can afford the mortgage in italy because the system for mortgages is very different. So I might be comfortable uh, that I can take a mortgage in the UK or in America uh, or, you know, in my own country. Um, but that doesn't mean that necessarily you will be able to take a mortgage in, in Italy because the, the systems and the, the way the affordability is calculated is very different. So it's good to know first that you are mortgageable and then in this way, you can see properties that will be within your price range. Otherwise, you risk it to see something you like and you cannot go ahead uh, or you make an offer conditional to a mortgage and then you waste your time, waste the agency time, waste the seller's time and people are not happy and you might lose the deposit as well. So, okay, I guess I, I, I should say as well, given that uh, there are sponsors, that um, it's a good, it's a, it's, it's a very good idea to speak to a currency expert as well, especially with the pound going up, up and down. Um, <clears throat> it's been, it's been all over the place. Uh, so it will be a good idea to speak to Smart Currency Exchange to at least have an idea of what you, what you're going to get for your your pounds or your dollars uh, in uh, euros, and also because when you commit to a uh, to a price. In euros, you've got to pay that that price in euros, but you're going to have no idea what it's going to be in in pounds uh, yeah. or uh, or, uh, or dollars a couple of months down. And also with um, uh, a foreign exchange company, you are able to block the the, uh, the exchange rate. So if you see something that you like now, but completion can be in six months, and now is the right moment to exchange without transferring the whole amount, you can uh, you can block. Uh, I think it's called a, a forward contract or something like that. We always recommend our clients to look at way uh, and working with their uh, foreign exchange broker to ensure that they know how much the property is going to cost if they complete in six months' time and by by doing different way without just changing the money straight away. Okay, so um, we are we are coming to Italy. Uh, we've got everything booked. How many properties would you advise looking at um, on a day? Uh, again, I'm sorry, it sounds repetitive. Depends where you're buying and what you're buying. If you buy country houses and if we are in the middle of the summer, uh, maybe five, six, seven, we can squeeze it. Uh, if it's winter, uh, you have to consider the weather. Uh, it's getting darker, so you're not going to see country houses with big lands. In the middle of the night, you're not going to work. You're not going to walk in the fields at six o'clock in the evening when it's pitch black. Uh, also, the distances from property to property that's need to be considered. So I would say between four, six, seven, and a push. If you are looking at flats, uh, so if you're looking at an apartment in Florence or Milan or in Rome, then you can move around. You know, we had uh, clients that recently has purchased a, a, a 
gorgeous apartment in Bologna, actually. Uh, and we saw in one day, uh, you know, they didn't, they came just for viewing for three days from the US. Uh, but they said, if it's possible, can we see it just in, uh, you know, they had a 12 apartment, can we see in one day? Obviously, one day was not possible, it was too tight, but we did it one day and enough because, you know, you are in the city center, you can move around very quickly, you get taxi and, you know, and off you go. So, again, really depends a bit of the, on the type of properties and the distances between one property to another one. Yeah, and I guess the, I, it's the kind of client, I mean, I, I've, um, sometimes you just walk into property and you just love it. And sometimes yeah, yeah. you just walk in properly, and even though it's right, it, it ticks all the boxes. You just you, uh, you just hate it. So I guess it's the case for just zi uh, zipping around and then leaving the last day for looking at them again, or or indeed getting your tax numbers or anything organised. Yeah, um, or just looking, you know, looking at locations. Uh, when people yeah. stay, we you know only for a few days. We always try to find some time to uh, for them to look up, you know where the property is, the surrounding, the town, uh, not necessarily that with us all the time, but, uh, you know, do the viewings and say, okay, we meet you in a few hours for after lunch or uh, meet you tomorrow. So you have a time to, you know, you like a property, but you've never been to this part of the city, have a time to wander around and uh, see if, uh, if it's something that you, you know, you, you like, you're not just buying the property. I always, rem you know, remind to our clients, you're not buying the house. But, you know, you buy whatever is around, the signs of community, the location, restaurant nearby, or the, you know, being just on the top of the hill and looking at beautiful, you know, landscape, depends, really. Okay. Um, so we've got lots of questions coming in. Uh, here's one from Guillermo. What percentage of the house price should we calculate for, for closing costs? Uh, really depends uh, on the cadastral value. So every property... As a, as a unique uh, uh, registration number uh, which on which the taxes are uh, calculated. Uh, but I would say a safe uh, uh, percentage, uh, it's between the 6 to 9% on top. Reason for resale, no property that are bought from developers. If you buy property from developers, you should consider on top between the uh, 10 to 15%. Uh, and visa will include the property taxes, uh, notary fee, uh, agency fee, um, the surveyor, uh, pretty much it now. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've had a few questions, uh, a few questions on mortgages. Uh, I guess people are trying to get them in before all the exchange, all the interest rates go up. Um, but the, uh, so we've had one from, um, one from Steve. Stephen asks, is there a formula for a mortgage qualification? No, uh, <clears throat> there is no, because it's not like in the UK, in the US, where you have your wage multiplied by uh, uh, three, four, five, whatever. Uh, the bank in Italy will look at your um, incoming, your outgoings, uh, and then the amount left uh, has to have a percentage uh, but I'm not going to give you this percentage because then it depends as well how many dependents so how many children or uh, people uh, depend on. So if you have a couple with two children uh, that they are minor 18 uh, and you have a couple uh, that doesn't have children, same wage, uh, same outgoing, same, um, same expenditure so, and, and same income, they will have a total different uh, uh, mortgage offers or possibility. Okay. Okay. We are complicated. Yeah. Yes, I can see. <laughs> I'm going to uh, ask a few general questions and, and then we'll get down to some specifics from, from viewers. Uh, okay, so this one, is, yeah. Um, what is the situation with asking prices? So would, would I, if I love the property, would I be a fool to offer the full asking price or? Try not to ask for the, for the asking price. Um, obviously, if a seller has uh, recently reduced the price uh, or you're dealing with a, a constructor, so developers are the one that uh, are the most difficult to negotiate. Um, the negotiation usually one can expect about the 10 percent, then depending on who you have in front, you know, you might have a, bar, a seller who is so desperate to sell because he has uh, some other commitment 
and it might be willing to negotiate it far and above the 10, 15, 15 percent. We had negotiation up to 30 percent actually once, uh, actually once even more. Um, but uh, at the same time, developers tend to negotiate much less uh, around the three, five percent. Uh, but certainly try, you know, uh, as long as it's not a shocking offer and the, the agent that you are with should be able to give you an idea. Uh, and, and most of all, um, check whether the sellers has received other offers and when was the last offer that he was received and rejected. Because uh, if somebody has received an offer and was rejected, but that was two years previous, uh, and you want to try the same amount is different than if the uh, same offer was offered a month ago. Uh, so do a bit of investigation in terms of what's the price situation, but certainly let's try uh, to go down a little bit on the price. Now, if, uh, presumably, if we go with a property organiser like you, who is our own buying agent, I, I guess in the UK we're not really used to buying agents, uh, American viewers will be perhaps more, but uh, you would do almost the negotiation for us. You'd certainly know know what would be the fair market rate. Yeah, we deal with everything. I mean, uh, as I said, we uh, would start with the negotiation. We would, from the beginning, when we speak with the, uh, with the, with the sellers or with the local agency, uh, we're able to to see whether there are some property that within the budget of our client. So if, for example, a client has a budget of 300, I might be able to, to show a property for 400 because maybe the local seller said, look, or the local agent said, look, propose this property, even if it's about budget, I know the seller wants to offer it, you know, wants to sell, is very keen. So we would have some kind of, let's call it inside information. Uh, but yeah, we would negotiate it uh, throughout um, the, the process and uh, working is that getting also the best notary, the best price, um, the surveyor at a, a good quote. Um, we've been in business for 16 years, so we, you know, we know what we're doing, <laughs> let's say. Okay, um, right. Uh, hold hold this, uh, the surveyor thought because we're going to come back to that. But I have yeah. a couple of questions on uh, people who don't, don't need a mortgage, they have, they have the cash. Does that give you more? Yeah, a better bargaining position. Um, well, if you have a mortgage in in your own country, so basically you are acting as a cash buyer in 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 Italy, or you are a cash buyer, uh, you have a little bit more a bargaining uh, kind of power because you can be quicker. So you can say, "I'm offering this amount, but within two months I can complete." So just the time to carry out the due diligence ensuring that the you know the property is fine structurally etc all the planning history is okay and then we can go ahead um if you have a mortgage now in terms of also timing and uh, the ukraine uh, uh, situation doesn't help uh, banks tend to be a bit slow so if somebody has to make an offer uh, conditional to a mortgage um it will not be able to sign it for at least the first two months and that basically means that the seller has to be kind of willing to accept an offer where you might not see money if the offer is conditional to, to a mortgage uh, for a good two months or two months or two and a half months. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, going back to that thought on uh, surveying. Surveying. Now, <laughs> yeah, we all, uh, well, we don't all, actually, a lot of people want, want to buy a brand new property. But for those of us who want to buy a old and beautiful property, uh should what's this what's the process of getting a surveyor and should we, um, should we get one is it normal what's it, it is uh it, it it is not the you know in terms of the system in italy not many italians do take the surveyors um with all our clients we make our offers conditional to a survey report uh and now with the you know in the years you know, 20, 30 years ago, it wasn't like that. Now, a lot of Italians do take a surveys up as well. Uh, because the surveyor doesn't just check the structural condition of the property, but check also the planning history of the property. And, you know, you have to bear in mind that until a few years ago, uh, 10 years ago, up to, yeah, 20, 
uh, for tea. So we're looking at uh, less than 10 years ago. One could go to buy a property and go to the notary, knowing that the land registry papers were not correct. But if I, as a buyer, and you as a seller agree uh, that we're happy to go to the notary, we could still sign it. Uh, one instead, um, the last years, uh, the restrictions and the responsibility that the property has to be compliant to planning, urban, and the land registry regulations um, ensures that, you know, makes that the property has to comply. Otherwise, the a deal can be made void. So even if you signed up a notary, um, the final deed could be more, could be void. Uh, so a lot of property might look fine on uh, on paper. Uh, so you have to remember in Italy there are two different type of uh, legislation: the land registry that check the layout of a property, and then the planning legislation. And very often. The right hand doesn't speak with the left hand, as I always try to explain to a client. So you might have a floor plan that matches the property, but no planning permissions have been made. So you think, well, the plans matches, so the property is fine. But maybe a surveyor just uh, did the drawings and went to the department to submit the plans without showing that the planning permission were made. So. As I say, right hand doesn't speak with the left hand so very often. So it's important that the surveyor check the planning history and that the property has reached the, you know, the layout and the situation of, of this renovation as it is when you see it legally with all the authorization. And that would be done by a, a surveyor rather than a lawyer? Yeah, surveyor. Ah, okay. That's interesting. Okay, great. Uh, okay, question from Drew. What's the average time to complete a sale with the offer to actually fly an actual ownership? Yeah, if a property doesn't have, you know, carry out a survey, done the due, the legal due diligence, everything is fine. Uh, the seller doesn't need to arrange a removal, or it doesn't need to find another property. It can be as quick as two months. Uh, it depends also on the, on the situation of the property and the parties. What uh, you know, what is the requirement? Because you might have a seller that uh, need to clear the house, and we are in the months of August. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we've had a couple of questions actually asking uh, on uh, viewing trips. So they're not ready to buy yet. Mm -hmm. but they want to come to Italy and look at properties. Um, how would that work? Would you would you advise uh, being being straight up and just saying, look, we're not buying yet, but could you please take take us to uh, to look at properties, or would an agent look askance at that and say, yeah, you have very very, very often agencies will not be prepared to take you out, or uh, they will hope that you do fall in love with the property yes. uh, and uh, you change your mind in terms of timing. So, so it yeah. depends who you have in front, but again. I always, uh, one thing I say to our clients when they are thinking to buy maybe in a year time or two years time, if they want to see property now, because uh, I've seen it before, try to, rather than looking at properties, because you can look at properties on websites and uh, photos, rather than looking at properties, focusing on location, travel around, enjoying the, the areas and discover the areas that you like the most. So when you are ready, you can go to, you know, say to the agent, I like this area because X, Y, and Z, and then you can buy. Because if you see then a property that you like and it ticks every box, but you don't have funds, uh, it's pretty much, you know, a, a wasted trip, not much for the agents, but for yourself. And then very often you're going to compare other properties to the one that uh, kind of got away. So yeah. focusing more on locations. Yeah. Okay. Um Okay, we got one a question from Sil. Uh, sounds like a cry from the heart here. Any trick to discovering reasonably priced properties in Milan? Sorry, I cannot say again. Any trick? Is there any trick to discovering reasonably priced properties in Milan? No. It really depends. <laughs> just keep on. It really depends on, 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 on locations. Uh, yeah. Looking at, I mean, don't focus in only on, I mean, Milan has a lot of lovely pocket areas uh, that uh, might have a cheaper prices 
uh, than the most known uh, touristic areas. So it is a good idea to, uh, I go back to look at locations and don't, you know, obviously if you, you know, if you're going on the, on the main road, on the uh, fashion, fashion district, prices yeah. are going to be super expensive, but there are so lovely areas like al along the canals and uh, uh, where prices can be within the, the 250, 300 for a good, uh, you know, good size apartment. Yeah, I, I'm always amazed when I look at the properties on, on uh, Lake Como, which is just got yeah. about, just about the most beautiful views in the world. You can get there really easily from the, from, uh, from the UK. It hasn't been overdeveloped. And yet, you know, you can buy a lovely apartment there for a, a really reasonable price. Um, I, 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 there was a question actually on, uh, on prices, uh, so if I can find it. But in general, yeah, okay, from Stephen. In general, is the pricing in Italy heading up or down? Again, depends on the location. Uh, in Italy, you never had, uh, not even on the super kind of uh, uh, years where everybody, you know, all the prices were going up, massive increase. We always had a steady 2 3% uh, increase. Uh, some areas reach the four or five percent on this kind of golden years uh but it's always been kind of steady so when we had a, a moment of uh, you know a slow economy rather than the two or three we had the zero one percent so very few areas had a drop going you know in in the loss uh if we want to say it but it's it's steady it's steady but again i mean chris uh, join on the on the on the on on the things about Lake Como. Again, Lake Como is a long lake. And so if you go on the very top of Lake Como, you can get apartments that are starting within 100, 150. The same apartment if we are on the southern part of Lake Como or near Bellagio, or you're looking about the 300,000. So again, it really depends on the distance from the airport, distance from the, for the touristic cities, uh, and it doesn't say that, you know, doesn't mean that being on the top of uh, Lake Como, it's, uh, it's a bad thing. It's beautiful villages. Yeah. Uh, but you, instead, rather than taking you half an hour, it might take you an hour and a half, which yeah. is not uh, still bad anyway. I guess you pay a premium for, for having uh, George Clooney as your, as your neighbour, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's not that okay. often now. <laughs> Isn't he? Oh, well. Um, okay. So um, we've had one from, uh, interesting one from Serafima who would like to buy a commercial property, maybe an office, and convert it to, uh, to a residential pro uh, property. Is that kind of thing possible? It is possible. Uh, once, uh, it, not every area allows you. Uh, so the pro if a property is registered uh, as an office, uh, you need to ensure that the conversion can be made. So an agent that advertise a property would have you know, should have, let's say, uh, done the due diligence before advertising it and informing people uh, that this property can be converted into uh, into residential. Uh, if it can be converted into residential, uh, the land registry makes paying uh, the, the buyer for the switch uh, some, uh, some uh, community charges uh, that really depends on the square meters. Uh, so, yeah, it is possible, but equally, uh, there are, for example, some some um, apartments in uh, uh, often happens in uh, uh, in Florence that are registered as offices. Um, they cannot be converted, so they cannot be switched into into residential. Um, but they are rented and sold as a residential. So you need to know that you are buying the, an office yes. uh, and. And it will remain in office, uh, so the taxes will always be as the office. Therefore, right. not going to be a, uh, you know, uh, you cannot move your residency there. Uh, but you can live there. Nobody's going to say anything. A lot of places get rented out, but they are registered as offices. Okay. Uh, there were a of questions about um, post Brexit. What's the kind of the attitude to towards British people now? I, I, I don't know what. Like what we're asking i know that um is it possible to get visas are those processes yeah. quite quite easy or is there a kind of um... yeah i mean 
the, the thing is now with before, uh, if I buy a property in Italy and I want to stay longer than three months, I didn't have any problem because we were in Europe. Uh, now, instead, if I want to stay in the property or in Italy longer than three months, I will have to apply for a visa. And the, the visas, there are different type of visas. Most of our clients apply for uh, elective residency visas. Um, and when we do the application with them, um, we need to ensure that the, the income uh, that, that they have um, is enough for, you know, to allow you to do the, uh, to the elective residency visa. Because elective residency visa, for example, doesn't allow you to work in Italy. Um, so if somebody wants to move generally to Italy, not just for leisuring for more than three months a year in Italy, um, we need to look at the various types uh, of application. There are visas for uh, um, freelancer, there are visas for uh, startups, a visa for um, dependent workers or for self-employee. So it really depends. But as I said, nine out of 10 of our clients go for the elective residency visa. So they, they are either uh, self-employed, so they can work anywhere in Italy, or, so anywhere in the world, or they are retired. Okay. Um, well, we'll look, we've, uh, we're at the time, I'm afraid. We've got lots of questions coming in, most of them about, uh, lots and lots of them about visas uh, and, and so on. So uh, I want to say a big thank you to, uh, to you, um, Stefania, and um, that was a really, a really great uh, overview. You answered loads and loads and loads of questions. You're welcome. Um, and but I also want to thank the uh, the audience for all their uh, really good uh, questions. We do recommend that uh, you get in touch with 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 uh, with Stefania. We'll be sending you. We'll be sending uh, viewers uh, your contact details. And um, thank you to everyone for uh, for watching this this session. And we wish you in your all the best in your property purchase in Italy. Uh, do. Please check out uh, the website, Your Overseas Home, and also Italy Property Guides, and you'll find uh, loads more information. Uh, but and I hope you'll contact um, Stefania and and head over there on a viewing trip. So thanks again to you, Stefania, and to the audience, and happy property hunting. Goodbye. <laughs>